boom. Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and I'm going to talk to you about the ch ch chain rule. Yep, like, uh, like ch 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 chain. The chain rule, and what I call the general power rule, which is just a type of chain rule um, that you can really kind of think about. Just kind of think about it really easy here, okay? So let's take a look at the chain rule. This is 3 3 for essentials of calculus. Calculus. Um, so here's the general power rule. The general power rule means, what I mean by general is that there might be a function that's raised to a power. So, so in this case, I'm calling it u, not, not u as in u or me as in me. Me, I could be a function, I guess. Um, but the variable u is going to be a function of x, and that's going to be raised to a power. A lot of times we got to use this for, like, we've got a function inside of a square root or inside of, of something that we can't, easily take a foil method of so if we have it like raised to the 20th power we're not going to want to you know multiply those guys 20 out times right so we got a quick way to do that and inside what we're going to basically do is we're going to use a power rule just like we normally do but the stuff that's inside that power we're going to take the derivative of that and we're going to multiply it kind of at the end we're going to kind of like hook it on to the end of the the derivative all right so uh, that u prime factor, we call it the hook on factor. And this is really, really essential. And it's really, really uh, uh, an important part of the chain rule. So basically the idea is power rule, take the derivative of the inside function. Power rule, take the derivative of the inside function. Okay, let's take a look at that in practice here. So um, I've got here x squared minus 3 squared. So the inside function, the u part is right here. All right, this is the u part. So at the end, I'm going to hook that on in the end by taking the derivative of that. So I'm going to take the derivative, and I'm going to use it the power rule. So the power is right here, the 2. I'm going to bring that down, and I'm going to keep the stuff inside the same. Subtract 1, which is going to give me a 1 right there. And then I'm going to hook on, right next to it, the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. All right, and that's my derivative there. Okay? Let's take a look at number two. So I'm going to, again, I first I got to change this guy. So let's change this to 2x squared minus x to the 3 halves. Okay. Then I'm going to, this is my u in here. So I've got to take the derivative of that at the end and hook it on to the end. So my derivative is going to be my power rule, which is 3 halves times the inside. Subtract 1, so 2 two halves, so I'm going to have 1 half, times the hook on factor, which is the derivative of the inside, which is 4x minus 1. I'll put that in parentheses, and that is my derivative. All right, now on to the third problem here. Now, sometimes from time to time, I might need to use the product rule or the quotient rule, whichever one you, you're going to need to use, like I, we had on the last uh, previous section with the chain rule. So I'm going to change this here to 3x squared times 9 minus 4x squared raised to the one third power. So notice here I have something inside a power. So we're going to use the, we got to use the product rule here because we have 3x squared times that stuff. So we're going to take the derivative and we're going to use the product. So the derivative, so we're going to take the first which is 3x squared, times the derivative of all this stuff here. So the derivative of this, now we've got our hook. Our hook on here is the mid inside, the inside derivative of that. We're going to hook that on the end here. So the power rule, we're going to do one-third, 9 minus 4x squared raised to the negative two-thirds now because I subtract one. And then i got to hook that guy on, right? i got to hook on the inside, which is the derivative of the inside, which is negative 8x, okay? Plus, so I'm using the product rule, right? So the, the first times drew the second, plus the derivative of the first, which was 6x, times the second. And here is my derivative, that whole thing, okay? So we just can't, can't miss our, our hooks right here, our hook on things, all right? You're going to really need to really quickly distinguish the difference between the product rule and, and chain rule when we're looking at the actual chain rule as um, it's written out. So here's the chain rule. 
We use it to differentiate composite functions, any composite function for that matter. f of g of x, it's f prime of g of x, so it's the derivative of the whole thing, times the derivative of the inside. I wouldn't really concern myself with the, this rule when we're talking about the power, the general power rule. Really, you're going to really want to know this stuff here when we're looking at a, uh, a, a chain rule problem where we're given um, kind of general, we're given kind of just pieces of a puzzle that we got to figure out. We're not given an actual equation. Okay, so let me show you an example of that. So let's suppose I have all this information here. Okay, and we want we want to find the derivative of this composite function at x equals two. So I have to know right off the top of my head. Hey, I know what derivatives of composite functions are. Derivatives of composite functions use the chain rule. The ch ch chain rule. So that's p prime of q of x times q uh, um, prime of x, right? So I'm just going to use a chain rule. p prime of q q x times q prime x. So I want to know this at x equals 2. So that's p prime q of 2 times q prime of 2. So now I'm going to use the information. What's q of 2? q of 2 is right here. q of 2 is 3. So I'm going to fill in a 3 there. Times q prime of 2. All right. So what's p prime of 3? Well, let me look here, look here, look here. Oh, there it is. P prime of 3 is 4. What's Q prime of 2? Let me look, let me look, let me... Oh, there it is right there. It is 2. And 4 times 2 is not 2, it's 8. And that's my answer there. So there were two items here that we didn't even actually need. And they do that on purpose, okay? So you have to know the chain rule and how to use these for these types of problems. Okay, guys. There we go. We've got the general, uh, the general power rule using what we call what's a type of a chain rule, and then the chain rule itself used to differentiate composite functions. Good luck, guys. We'll see you soon.